Glory to God. We're in a series right now, Thoughts of Restoration. It's not our custom or our tradition to start a series on Bible study, but we did last week. So I'm just asking if you would bear with me and give me your patience as I just update everyone who may have missed Bible study. Our title of the series is Thoughts of Restoration. Part one, we taught around Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. We couple the message with 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and us bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. These scriptures informing us God thoughts, God ways, God intentions are greater and higher than what we could imagine. God wants us to know as we think about his thoughts towards restoration <laughs> that there is a predetermined counsel of God, amen, <laughs> in a perspective that God intentions for us is greater than what we could ever intend for ourselves. Can we say amen, glory to God? <laughs> Aren't you so glad this morning to know that you your God, amen, has a thought process concerning you that is greater than your situation, that is greater than whatever you've been through. Aren't you so glad this morning to realize that when God thinks about you, that it is as high as the heavens are above the earth. So we think about the height of the heavens above the earth, and there are things that happen in this earthly realm, situations, there's proclivities, there's COVID-19. But when God thinks about us, he thinks about us having Zoe life, a life full of joy, a life full of patience, a life full of power. Can you just echo with me today? My thoughts of restoration is God's thoughts concerning me. Part one, we gave the definitions, bishop views, if you would put it up for me, please. God planned in his thoughts of restoration. Thoughts are defined as intentions, plan, plot of good advice, cunning and curious work. Restoration means a restoring to an unimpaired or improved condition to bring back into existence or use. I want to read restoration again. A restoring to an unimpaired. Have you ever had your vision impaired before? I'm dealing with it right now and having some difficulty with my optics, with my eyes. But somebody say, when God thinks about us, his thoughts is to bring us to an unimpaired place of vision. God's thoughts concerning us is to bring us to a place that he thought concerning us before sin ever entered into the world. It's called Zoe life. Somebody say Zoe life. And then we gave the definition of what way means. Way to put again into possession of something of a course of life or mode of action. St. John 10 and 10 tells us that the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. When God considers our restoration, he's considering us in abundant life. Do I have anybody on YouTube or in the building this morning that can believe God for abundant life? Nothing missing, nothing broken, a life, glory to God, that is full and complete in God. And what God wants us to know this morning Pastor James, that in his restoration plan and process for us, that he's going to take us higher than our problems. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe when God is talking to us about restoration, he is not talking to us just about restoration of the temporal things that we may have lost. Temporal things meaning the job, temporal the things meaning a relationship even, temporal things meaning our car or our home. 
I believe that when God, amen, talks about restoration, he is considering the estate of our soul. That God will restore our soul, Pastor Hawkins, before we ever suffered loss. You know how it is in life in situations. You want God to restore some things back in your life. But I heard my daughter say, sometimes loss is deliverance. And I believe just like Israel, that when God God intends to restore us. He restores us concerning the thoughts and the plans that he has for us. I've come to realize now, glory to God, that the quintessence of uh, and the essence of restoration is the restoring of my soul. God wants to restore our soul to the quintessence of his will for us, Pastor James, that he even said to us, let this mind be in you that is also in in Christ Jesus. He wants our thoughts of restoration to be so much higher than our proclivities that when we come to church and give God a praise in advance for what we have not yet manifested or had manifest in our life that the very exuberance and altitude of our praise is because we are thanking on those things that God thanked towards us. Can you tell your neighbor I got thoughts of restoration and the reason I praise God the way I do is because I'm thinking on the good things that God is about to do in my life. Can anybody praise God above your pain? Can anybody praise God above your current condition? The Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I believe that when we start thinking blessed, we are praise God like we're blessed. I believe when we start thinking we are healed, we are begin to operate like we are healed. I believe when we begin to think that the joy of the Lord is our strength, we are throw back our shoulders and we are begin to walk in the strength and the veracity of God's power. We are be so unapologetic for what God has done in our life that even the devil will begin to tremble and say who are these great people that God has called out of darkness into his marvelous lights can somebody say I got a thought that my body is being restored I got thoughts that my mind is being restored I know that all of us every now and again we might deal with depression because of the anxieties and the stress of this present world I know every now and then no matter how anointed we are, we want to be like Elijah, Minister Laverne, and go sit under a juniper tree and wait for God to have somebody else complete what he is assigned and attached to our life. But I want you to know this morning that when you begin to think the way the thinker thinks towards you, you will start thinking about power. You will start thinking about the accomplishment you will start thinking that not only is God going to bless me, but he's going to bless everything that is connected to me. God's thoughts of restoration. The essence of it is that the soul of man would be restored to the altitude that God desires for him. Do I have anybody in the room today that every now and then you get caught up in prayer and God begins to take you to a higher place like he did the Apostle Paul and you catch visions and dreams of things that you could not even even imagine because here Pastor Mike I want you to know that the Bible says that God's thoughts are so higher than our thoughts that God has put something down in our spirit that we can't even comprehend the old saints would say how do I know I just know down in my knower because I spent so many days thinking about the vastness and how good God is can somebody say God is good that is glory to God my syllabus concerning last week but this week thoughts of restoration part two our discourse is centered around amen the mighty warrior Joshua if you can 
grab your Bibles and the Amplified and let's look at I feel a preach but I got to teach through here Mother Hargrove let's look at Joshua 5 and 1 and it reads as thus when you have it it's our custom and tradition jump up on your feet glory to God put your head up and look down at the same time hallelujah in reverence to the awesomeness of God's word I feel it in here this morning Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you have it, say, read, Bishop. Joshua 5 and 1 reads, When all the kings of the Amorites, who were beyond the Jordan to the west, and all the kings of the Canaanites, who were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan before the Israelites until we had crossed over, their hearts melted and there, were, and there was no spirit in them anymore because of the Israelites. What God is saying here, I'm about to do something so great in your life that it's even going to cause your enemies to fear the next move. Can you shout glory to God? Verse 2, at that time the Lord said to Joshua, make knives of flint and circumcise the new generation of Israelites as before. Somebody say circumcision and covenant. You may be seated in his presence. It's so glory to God in important when God begins to bring us into the land that he desires for us to possess. Israel have now got over the Jordan and the waters which had opened before them to favor their march forward are closed again behind them. And if we don't keep our mind and our thoughts towards heaven and towards God, when God begins to bring you into victory and prominence and he shuts some doors in your life situationally you will begin to look back and wish you were where you just came from what are you saying brother bishop in this plight and series of restoration God wants to challenge our mind not to look back tell your neighbor because I thought that 1980 was the best year of my life but God is telling me to tell us today that there is a predetermined and season that God has for you. He has laid the foundation. He is bringing those things that are not as though they already are. And when God brings you into the land that flows with milk and honey, he's going to shut some doors in your life. He's going to dispel some relationships. He's going to change some jobs. And he's going to say, don't you look back thinking that it was better in Egypt that was just a temporary season and that season is about to change somebody say it's about to change glory to God God brought them into a place and it said the waters had opened that they would have a favorable march God is opening wide some things for the people of God that we can have a favorable march forward and not look back in life God gave them good footing in Canaan and, and they had to apply themselves Pastor James to the plight and the conquest that was in front of them. The Bible lets us know that when the kings of the Amorites had heard that Israel had came across the Jordan, that they had no more spirit in them, it meant that the thing that was opposing them had to back up, glory to God, because of the power of God that was with Israel and had went before them. You know of God before you was more than the whole world that is against you so God went before Israel and we see restoration because he does the same thing for this new generation that he did for the former generation the Bible says that when they came out of Egypt that God had parted the Red Sea he made the waters congeal on the left and on the right side that the children of Israel could go marching through and now we see a new generation 
with only two men that were left from the former, which is Joshua and Caleb. Tell your neighbors, say, when God begins to restore, he'll show you some past miracles just so you can comprehend his present glory. I am so glad, glory to God, that every now and then my situation might look like what my parents went through, but the same God that, amen, parted the sea of provision for them is the same God that will make provision for you. But as for this generation that is about to go back and repossess the land, God is saying not only will you have the land of Canaan, but I'm going to give you additional territory. I'm going to give you the land of the Jebusites. I'm going to give you the land of the Parasites. Parasites. I'm going to give you the land of the Jebusites. Can you just say God's thoughts of restoration is even greater than what my ancestors had. God here is talking to Israel. He is only restoring their confidence in what God spoke in Exodus 23. Exodus 23 and 23 reads, Pastor Amir, it says, when my angel goes before you, and brings you to the Amorites and the Hittites and the Parasites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, I will reject them and blot them out. Verse 24, you shall not bow down to their gods or serve them or do after their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and break down their pillars and images. You shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness from among your midst. Don't you let what you've been going through through for the last two years ever make you think that God is going to restore you halfway but in this restoration move of God say there shall be no sickness in my body there shall be no sickness in my mind there shall be no sickness in my household for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it Israel when you come into the good land of provision the land that I have planned for your life I'm taking away glory the curse that was upon you I'm removing the curse out of the land I'm removing the sickness in your body I'm removing the depression that has been in your mind I'm removing the inferiority complex I'm making the high places low I'm even making the crooked places straight I'm even getting rid of your adversaries that's been warring against you. And I hear the Lord say, and don't you be dismayed when the spoil comes to your hand. Because God said, Israel, don't you know that to the victor goes the spoils. So God is in his restoration plan going to bless you exceeding and abundantly above all that you can ask or think Israel get ready somebody say Israel had to get ready verse 26 in Exodus 23 reads and it said none shall lose her young by miscarriage or by barrenness in your land I, I will fulfill the number of your days. God is saying, I'm getting ready to restore my people that there shall be no more miscarriages. And not just miscarriages, meaning in glory, the lack of children. But there shall be no more dying to your vision. There shall be no more miscarriage in your planning and your strategy. Israel, there shall be no more miscarriage and what you've been believing me to do for your household somebody said God is going to fulfill the number of our years he told the elderly he said I will satisfy you with long life I'm getting ready when I bring you to my thoughts of restoration I don't care what the diagnosis is I don't care if you got lupus or cancer but you shall not 
die before your time. <laughs> Glory to God. The Lord is saying, I will fulfill the length of days when I bring you to my plan of restoration. Don't you feel encumbered about because mama is 85 years old. You better praise God that she's still here. Don't you ever feel encumbered about because your son may be going through a little bit of physical difficulty but give God a praise that in the thoughts of restoration he shall be healed he shall live and not die I don't know who God is talking to other than myself because the Bible says that the labor is the first partaker and I'm just asking you this morning get what belongs to you because the thoughts that God is thinking is thoughts of abundance the thoughts of life the thoughts of fulfillment the thoughts of victory let me stay with my discourse got some work to do Pastor James Exodus 23 and 27 reads and I will send my terror before you and will throw into confusion all the people to whom you shall come. And I will make all your foes turn from you in flight. There's something I got to footnote and underscore, Pastor Carlene. Because God is bringing them into a good land. But he tells them everyone they will come to will be folk that will try to oppress them. They are going to occupy what God has promised them, but they can't occupy without a fight. Oh, bless the name of the Lord Jesus. I am convinced, Brother Bobby, that the church has been marketed wrong. But what I love about God here, Brother Mike, is that God said he would send his angel, which now he'll send his spirit to confound and to confuse our adversary. And God is restoring our minds and our heart that we won't become high-minded when we get the victory because we are realize that it was God's plan of restoration, that it was not by might nor by power, but it was by his spirit. God sent his spirit to make the crooked places straight, Israel. God sent his spirit to bring the high places low. God sent his spirit that when you walk into the promised land, that he would confound your enemies, that he would give you an opportunity to worship God, that he would give you an opportunity to take inventory that you are blessed beyond measure. God said, and then this is what I'll do to them. He said, Israel, I will send hornets before you which shall drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, the Hittites from before you. God is sending some things upon his opposing forces. God is sending some things by his spirit that is going to drive out glory to God. What's been opposing your anointing, what's been opposing the body of Christ, what's been opposing church growth, what's been opposing, I know everybody think COVID is such a horrific thing, and it is, but one thing I've come to realize that it's exposing the heart of men. It's exposing who's with you and who's against you and God just like he told Israel that I will send hornets upon them to drive out and I believe that in this season that God is separating the wheat from the chaff and only the wheat will remain and don't you be dismayed because the chaff has its use to be burnt up and to ignite the anointing that's in your life. Do I have anybody this morning that has a righteous indignation and know that God is going before you and know that victory belongs to you and God is restoring the thoughts that he thinks towards you. What I love about this year that God is not only restoring the thoughts that he thinks towards us, but he's restoring the thoughts that we think concerning ourselves. 
Verse 29 reads, Pastor James, and I will not dry them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate. Now, I want to help all of us this morning. You feel victory, but you still see your opposer. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. And God says here to Israel that when you cross the Jordan and you go to the land of Canaan, I can't drive them all out at one time because you are not yet strong enough in number to occupy what you getting ready to possess. I want to help everyone every business owner in this place today that some of the reasons that the contract has been held up even though it's dangling in front of you because you don't have the infrastructure to meet the mandate of what God has foreordained for your life he was telling Israel you got the vision you know I'm going to do it but I got to keep the enemies in the land I'll say it this way paraphrasing huh? I'm just keeping it warm till you're ready glory to God he said Israel I know the land belongs to you but you're not strong enough I'm a Messiah in number yet you're not valid enough in spirit yet so I'm going to keep the enemy there just to keep the stuff warm until you're ready Glory to God. A year goes on and he tells them, he said, lest the land, I'm in the Amplified, Pastor James. He said, lest the land become desolate for lack of attention and the wild beasts multiply against you. He said, Israel, I got to keep them in the land. Again, because there's not enough of you strong enough to take each city. Because this Canaan that I'm about to give you is greater than Joseph's Canaan. Is greater than Abraham's Canaan. What are you saying, Brother Bishop? God's thoughts of restoring us in this season is what eyes have not seen. What ears have not heard. Neither has it in an Amasaya. In it into the heart of man. Somebody say God has a plan that supersedes our plan. Now in our scripture of discourse, pick me up in Joshua 5 and 2. Just give me about 22 more minutes. And it reads, and it says, and at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, he said, make knives of flint and circumcise the new generation of Israelites as before. For something happens in the wilderness, they stop. Uh, doing the Passover something happened in the wilderness they no longer kept the rituals something happened in the wilderness they no longer kept covenant with God they didn't fast like they used to fast they didn't pray like they used to pray there was bickering and murmuring the generation that came out with Moses, Joshua and Caleb they became very bitter and condescending they oppose the man and woman of God. It sounds just like the church of this present age, don't it? And the Bible says that a new generation had risen up in Israel. Pastor Hawkins, listen here. This was an uncircumcised generation. This was a generation that didn't come to the camp meeting when Moses would stand and tell them to open your tent doors. This was a rebellious generation that didn't want to come to church they didn't want to serve God but God told he told Joshua he said but this is the generation that I'm going to take in with you somebody shout it's a new generation but still an old covenant I'm going somewhere today and before they could go in and possess the land God told Joshua he said prepare sharp knives a Flint. He said, for what I'm about to do for you, I know the generation, they don't look like you. They don't church like you. But I promise Joshua, I will be their 
God and they shall be my children. God is getting ready to redeem this generation that we're living Masha that we're living in right now. But there has to be somebody. Somebody see the prophets can't stop being prophets. There has to be somebody that is still on the wall that know how to circumcise and circumcision means to bring the people into covenant because without covenant there is no occupying the promises tell your neighbor I know I look old fashioned but I'm keeping the covenant I know they think my gospel is outdated but I'm keeping the covenant I know they think that fasting repentance and prayer it don't take all of that but I'm keeping covenant because where God is taking us all of us have to be circumcised in our heart I know this generation wants everything real quick but circumcision takes time and not only does it take time it takes recovery time Oh, God, I feel like preaching, but I got some more work to do. Verse 3 of Joshua 5. So Joshua made knives of flint and circumcised the sons of Israel. And this is the reason Joshua circumcised them. All the males of the people who came out of Egypt, all the men of war had died in the wilderness on the way after they came out of Egypt. The generation, all the generals, somebody say all the generals had died. And there was a new generation. We see this in the church right now. It looks like all the generals have went on to be with the Lord. But I want every leader to know today that God is raising up a new men of war, a circumcised people. They might not want to robe like we robe, but when God gets done with them, he's going to have a mighty army. Elijah got to a place, Brother Joseph, where he became suicidal, and God spoke to his prophet. He said, listen here, man, I got 7,000 that has not bowed their knee to Baal yet. Don't you ever think that you're in this all alone because God got somebody who he's going to connect you with that's going to war like you war. God never intended for anybody to go into their promise all by themselves. Tell your neighbor we getting ready to put on our strength. Go occupy the land because the spirit of God has went before us and if we're going to go in that means our mind has to be restored to the mind of Jesus. I know some people today are willing to settle for less. You don't think the way the thinker thinks towards you no more but I'm here to tell somebody don't you ever stop thinking big because you serve a big God can you just shout I'm believing my God to do the impossible I don't care how cracked out your child is say God is still able I don't care how many years the judicial system has given your child God will take 25 and make them cut it down to five. I'm here to tell somebody, I don't care how your body feel, that when you can think, God will just say God will do. Verse five, the wall of the people who came out were circumcised, yet all the people who were born in the wilderness on the way after Israel came out of Egypt, had not been circumcised. Verse 6, for the Israelites walked 40 years in the wilderness till all the men that were of war came out of Egypt perished. This is something we don't want to miss in the church age. We have some people that have been with God for an extremely long time. 
But now they begin to get bitter. They get weary, Pastor Hawkins. They say, you know, this is not how we used to do it. This generation has no respect or appetite for God. And I will agree with you 100%. But don't complain when you can pray. And this is what happened to Israel. Instead of them pr pr praying for that generation, they complained about them. And if you complain about the generation, then you're going to blame the church. And if you're going to blame the church, you're going to blame leadership. Because human nature has not changed from the fall of Adam. Adam was a complainer. You know what he did. He said, God, the woman you gave me. So we still see a complaining spirit when it comes down to God. But God said, I'm a circumcised in that day their hearts and they will hearken unto me and I will be their God and they will be my people. Look at here, verse 7. So it was their uncircumcised children whom he raised up in their stead whom Joshua circumcised the right. The right means ceremonial practices of the church or group. Joshua brought them back into covenant with God. I want to say something to every parent in here. Don't you complain so much that you miss your promise and your child walk over. I refuse, glory to God, to degradate legacy because we might be in a situation or a season uh, that they might not look like we look or act like we are. I don't know who God is talking to in here but if you stay on your face uh, God has circumcised uh, the fat of their heart uh, and one day they'll rise up uh, and say this is my plight. Uh, this is my destiny. Uh, I'm ready to go in uh, and possess what God has promised me uh, because the promise that God made to the fathers of Israel was that I will bless you and your seed after you. Does anybody in here have a child right now that you believe in God to bring out? That you believe in God to bless? That you believe in God to take the reproof off of them? Why don't you stand on your feet and say God bring them out. War for your child today. War because you need everybody where God is about to take us we're going over into victory we're going over into promise we're going over and God has only kept the enemy in the land until we get ready but I want Satan to know the day that rather you recognize ready or not here we come ready or not here we come God brought them to the encampment of Gilgal, the place of rolling. Some parents might feel uh, this was not the message, but God can't restore you without restoring your children. And Brother Jeff has said he brought them down to the place called Gilgal, which means the place of whirlwind or the rolling place. You know how it gets some days. It feels like your family is in turbulence. Why won't these children listen to me? Why won't they obey? Don't they recognize that I've been here longer than them? But the Lord is saying he's about to circumcise. Just keep your position and your place. Don't start murmuring nor complaining because God has a no child left behind program. I feel it in my in my spirit in this place today. And God let Joshua know that the days is coming coming. Somebody say the days are coming. That he's going to bring the next generation to the forefront of time. And God is going to silence the enemies for a season. Now and I want to note one thing right here, Pastor James, that God allowed Israel to be circumcised in the company of their enemy. 
which means circumcision took a five to eight day process for the men to be healed and get back their strength which is saying brother bishop i'm telling you that god is going to restore your children right in the midst of adversity and give them enough time to get their strength up i don't know who the lord is talking to enemy all over your child trying to take their mind but when circumcision comes there's going to be a peace because the spirit of god has went before you has silenced the enemy has thrown drug addiction slow down has thrown fornication slow down has told everything to slow down because i'm circumcising the next generation covid slow down somebody say he's circumcising he's circumcising the next generation 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 now you can start thinking anything contrary that you and your seed shall be blessed you and your seed shall live you and your seed shall be fruitful and multiply and declare the works of the Lord God Almighty you and your seed shall occupy the good land you and your seed shall be triumphant over the enemies of God because they are not your enemies Israel they are my enemies they are the ones that Moses had to stand and say God if you don't bring them through your enemies will say that you wasn't able your child is going to be delivered because God's testimony is I'm able you keep vision you keep thinking about the good land you write the vision you make it plain and you tell them that God said we shall be above and not beneath I don't care how many enemies are in the land doesn't matter who don't underwrite your budget your program you raise the banner and say the land belongs to us we are just not strong enough to possess it yet it belongs it belongs somebody in Amasia somebody say it belongs it belongs thoughts of restoration it belongs to you and you'll see we went through a generation where parents would tell their children you know with blended families your daddy was never nothing you will never be anything but the God that we serve tell your neighbor say everybody is somebody and because you somebody we know the body say the body is compact jointly fit together I'm trying to stay focused but I feel the power of the Holy Spirit going in to possess greater but as a man thinketh in his heart so is he can you have a right heart with bad thoughts oh yes you can you know how you have a right heart but bad thoughts your heart is good but every time the adversary come your thoughts are crazy but God says I'm restoring glory to God your thought process I'm restoring the fortitude of your mind I'm restoring the power of faith in the church I'm restoring that you will know that I'm God and beside me there is no other God 
seed. I'm restoring the fall to be intention. I'm restoring your family and your finances. I'm restoring the power of your anointing. I'm restoring the efficacy of your favor. I'm restoring. Glory to God. I'm restoring the false that I think towards you, that there shall be no more barren in the land, that there shall be no more murmuring and complaining, that there shall be no more hypocrites in the camp. Tell your neighbor, God is stealing our adversary. God is stealing the adversary of the church. That fresh water can begin to flow. Some of the hellions, y'all not going to like me on YouTube. They not coming to church. It's okay. Because all they did was come to church. The church wasn't in them anyhow. Don't get mad at me. Glory to God. But when they come back, they're going to understand now the very power of being in his presence. You have some people to just come to church because it's the Sunday thing to do. But since COVID, if you're coming to church, it's because you love God. And God is saying that I will hold the adversary at bay. I hear you, Holy Spirit, because fresh water is in the building. Fresh water is in my spirit. God is saying, no longer shall bitter and sweet come out of the same fountain. My heart is good, but my mind is troubled. God says, no longer I'm a holy adversary that I can circumcise you for the good land don't look at your enemy the way you used to look at them don't look at your lack the way you used to look at it because God told Israel I got to keep some things in place until you ready tell your neighbor Say, when I get there, it'll belong to me. When I get there, because God's spirit is allowing me time to get my heart and my mind right. Glory to God. You thought the 80s was your best year. God said, I supersede time. You thought that job was the best time in your life. God said, no, brother, get your act together. Get your mind and your heart together. You blessed, but what I'm getting ready to bring you into, I need a real circumcision of your heart and your mind. I need you to think like I think. I need you to walk in and say, I'm blessed. And because I'm blessed, this place is going to be blessed. Israel walked into a land that belonged to their fathers. They get there and there's nothing but confrontation and war. And God shut the Jordan where there was no way back. He said, now either you're going to trust me and conquer or you're going to drown in the Jordan. But you take your choice. Because there's only one or the other. There is no in between, please. Tell your neighbor, there is no B plan. We either going to trust God, go in and conquer the land, or we're going to drown in our bicker and backbiting and complaining. But the choice is ours. If you know you're blessed, stand on your feet and shout, I'm going over to my promised land, restoring my soul and my mind, restoring my marriage, restoring my money restore my power I'm going over because there's no way back there's no way back my God there's no way back 
The job was wonderful. But you wasn't blessed because of the job. You was blessed because of God. The house was wonderful. You wasn't blessed because you had the 10,000 square feet. The house was blessed because you lived in it. Convoluted our mind with stuff. He said, Israel, I know this generation don't look like you all looked. Glory to God. They're not circumcised. And being uncircumcised, God told to Abraham, and circumcision was a covenantal sign that he promised him the land. That's what we forget sometimes. It wasn't that he promised him God. Faith is what made Abraham a friend of God. Circumcision was for the land. Glory to God. We think that circumcision was for his relationship. No, faith was his relationship with God. Circumcision was God's promise for him to have the land. Glory to God. And I'm not going to confuse my circumcision, which is my ceremonial right, with my faith in God. Because if circumcision and faith ever come together, there is no limit to what God will do in our life. What are you saying, Brother Bishop? Don't let the role fool you. I still fast and pray. I still repent every day. Because this, to some people, shows covenant. But my faith is in God. Glory to God. Look at here. Samson, a Nazarite priest. No wine, no razor on his hair. But one day, faith kicked in. And he said, God, restore me one more time. David had broke covenant. He's all three, priests, king and prophet. And he said, God, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I don't know who God is talking to, but he's getting ready to restore your faith, your land, your patience, your joy, your peace, your power, your presence with him. Restore. Glory to God. Restoration of the thoughts that God thinks towards us.